Welcome to Club Academia, where curiosity meets knowledge. Today, we're delving into the fascinating world of quantum computing. What is a quantum computer? How does it differ from a traditional computer? And how close are we to realizing its full potential? Unlike traditional computers, which use bits as the smallest unit of data, where each bit is either a zero or a one, quantum computers use quantum bits or qubits. Qubits can exist in multiple states at once, thanks to a phenomenon called superposition. In superposition, a qubit can represent multiple values simultaneously. This unique property allows quantum computers to process a vast amount of information more efficiently than classical computers. But that's not all. A qubit can also exhibit another fascinating property called entanglement. When qubits become entangled, the state of one qubit is directly related to the state of another, no matter the distance between them. This means that the measurement of one qubit instantly influences the other. We will explain more about superposition and entanglement in a separate video. This ability to be in superposition and entangled makes qubits incredibly powerful for complex computations. A single qubit can represent zero, one, or any combination of those states, thanks to the principles of quantum mechanics. A classic computer processes information in bits, which can be either zero or one. Let's look at how traditional computing power stacks up against quantum computing power using 8-bit, 16-bit, and 32-bit examples. A 16-bit CPU can process 16 bits of data at a time, while an 8-bit CPU can only process 8 bits. This means that a 16-bit CPU can handle twice the amount of data in a single operation. Similarly, a 32-bit CPU can process 32 bits of data at a time. This means a 32-bit CPU can process four times more bits or data at the same time compared to an 8-bit CPU. However, in reality, things are not that simple because multiple factors like CPU architecture, clock speed, and other factors impact processing power. This is called data handling ability of a computer. Bits behave linearly. Qubits are different. Every qubit doubles computing power. A 16-bit computer can do 16 times faster than a single-bit computer. A 32-bit computer can do 32 times faster than a single-bit computer. In the digital world of bits, computational speed grows linearly. On the other hand, 10 qubit computer could do 2 to the power of 10 calculations, or 1024 calculations. A 100 qubit quantum computer could perform over 1000 billion 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 simultaneous calculations. Let's take a closer look at how an 8 qubit quantum computer's processing capability differs significantly from classical computing. Superposition, each qubit can exist in a state of 0, 1, or both simultaneously. An 8-qubit quantum computer can represent 2 to the power of 8, which equals 256 different states at the same time. Entanglement, qubits can be entangled, meaning the state of one qubit can depend on the state of another, allowing for complex correlations that classical bits cannot replicate. Parallelism, due to superposition and entanglement, an 8-qubit quantum computer can perform many calculations simultaneously, exponentially increasing its processing power compared to classical bits. While an 8-bit classical computer can represent 256 different values, an 8-qubit quantum computer can leverage the principles of quantum mechanics to perform calculations on all 256 states at once, leading to a potentially massive speedup for certain types of problems. Imagine a coin. It can only be heads or tails. Now, imagine a spinning coin. While it's spinning, it's in a superposition of states, it's both heads and tails until it stops. Qubits are like spinning coins, existing in multiple states until measured. Traditional computers use transistors to process information. Each transistor can represent a zero or a one. Think of it like a light switch, it's either on or off. If a computer has 1000 transistors, it can handle 1,000 bits of information at once. With qubits, the computational possibilities expand exponentially. As you add more qubits, the processing power increases at a much faster rate than with transistors. This is because qubits can explore multiple possibilities simultaneously, while transistors can only process information sequentially. Generative AI went from being deemed impossible to becoming a transformative technology. And what's even more exciting? 
we might be on the brink of a similar breakthrough with quantum computing. While the potential of quantum computers is immense, there are significant challenges to overcome. One of the biggest hurdles is maintaining the delicate quantum states of qubits. External factors, such as temperature fluctuations and electromagnetic interference, can disrupt these states. Let's start with generative AI. Just a decade ago, many experts believed it was impossible for machines to create content as humans do. There were several reasons for this skepticism. Limited computational power. Early algorithms required more processing power than what was available. Lack of data. The vast data sets we have today simply didn't exist, making effective training challenging. Complex algorithms. Traditional models weren't sophisticated enough to generate realistic outputs. Understanding creativity, the intricacies of human creativity felt too complex to replicate with machines. But then came the breakthroughs. Advances in hardware like GPUs, the explosion of data from the internet, and innovative algorithms like generative adversarial networks or GANs, changed the game entirely. These developments led to remarkable applications in art, music, and writing, proving that generative AI could produce high-quality content. Now let's draw a parallel to quantum computing. Just like generative AI faced skepticism, quantum computing is still viewed as an emerging technology with immense potential. However, many believe we are on the cusp of a tipping point. When generative AI hit its tipping point, it opened doors to remarkable possibilities. The same could happen with quantum computing. Once the challenges of scalability and error correction are overcome, we might see quantum computers tackling problems that are currently unsolvable. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more science and technology content. Do you have any questions about quantum computing? Leave a comment below. Stay tuned for more explorations of the wonders of science. Until next time, keep questioning and stay curious.